In the late 1800s, early 1900s, we had what was called the Federation Drought. Probably the biggest drought that has occurred in European history of this country. There was a lot of overgrazing, there was rabbits, and there was a drought, and they all came together to form this massive devastation. And it changed the landscape irreversibly. People couldn't recognise the country anymore. When you look at some of the erosion that, it, that you can see now, it's a legacy of that time. There's been a lot of natural um, regeneration, um, but there are some things that w we can help with this rangeland rehabilitation program. There's still a lot of work for landholders to do, um, but the local land services, we help them to be able to sustainably manage their country. Luke and Sarah Mashford, we live at Catawpa Station, uh, about 50,000 hectares, about 230 kilometres northeast of, of Broken Hill, and we live here with our three kids. So we bought Catawpa in 2012. We started identifying things that could be better and why we were losing a fair bit of topsoil and where we could improve vegetation, ground cover, water supply, you know, there was a lot to do. Started putting together a bit of a 10 year plan on improvements and then talking to, to LLS and with Paul here, where we all sat down with uh, satellite imagery maps, put the overlays on and then worked out where all the issues were. And so then you go to the toolkit and pick out the right tool. For us, it was a lot of ponding, 10 centimetre ponds, uh, which would need a grader of, of some decent size and horsepower. So we went and bought our own. We're not stopping any water flow, it's just slowing it down, getting it all back to a, a bit of a baseline, I guess. Paul has an amazing ability to look at the landscapes, make it work, get all this stuff to fit. They bring an amazing amount of, of knowledge and experience to the table. We can try and drought proof things a bit more on the fodder side, but you've really got to control your grazing pressures on it and then start this works to get the maximum benefits from it and we're just starting to see it now. The idea is to rehydrate these dehydrated systems. So you have a rainfall event and because there's so many erosion features throughout the landscape, it just, the water gets sucked out of the landscape and it doesn't have time to sort of soak in, sit around, um, it's just gone. We've been working with um, Hugh Pringle who runs the Ecosystem Management Understanding Program. There's so much erosion out here so the scale of the issue is huge, like it's tens of thousands of hectares, so where do you start? And this process um, that Hugh Pringle's um, developed, it, it, it's all about um, prioritising and coming up with a strategy. We look at um, these erosion features and try to work out, okay, how can we stop the water going down them, like spreading the water away from gullies uh, or water ponding. You're recreating these um, ephemeral wetlands that were in the landscape before the erosion occurred. You get a little bit of rain now, like 20 mils of rain, and, and those floodplains, which were dehydrated, they were dying, they come to life now. Hundreds of acres have been flooded now, which haven't been flooded for years. It just hasn't had the water. And so it's exciting to see like everything's just having a big drink of water now which it just didn't have before. And that type of work is just brilliant. It, it's it's um, a win-win for everyone. The native plants and animals that, that need that water on these floodplains, they're benefiting, they're, they're starting to spring to life. And so you're having this dual outcome where you've got the environment benefiting and the grazing farming family benefiting as well. So it's really exciting to be involved in that type of work.